Right. Thank you, thank you. Glad everybody's here tonight. As, uh, as you probably know, we are working on reaching the lost and we are transitioning into teaching the lost. Let's see if we have that. Yes. So if, you'll, if you remember your syllabus, what, where we are is we're, we're moving on down through um, May. Most of, a good part of June will be QA and things like that. So we are now transitioning in to a section that talks about mainly teaching. So when Brian and I were talking about that, we were thinking, if you approach somebody to teach them, they're going to say, oh, you go to that church that, that doesn't have any music or something like that. You probably hear those kind of things, or, or at least you're, you're aware of them. So one of the things uh, that usually we'll run into is concerns about uh, baptism, the, ne the, the necessity of it. So we'll get to your handout here in a few minutes. But what I want to uh, uh, first do is just say that we're going to have th uh, four classes on sort of controversial issues. Tonight is baptism. Then we're going to have uh, uh, instru instrumental music. Then Three, I will cover three items next Wednesday, and then uh, Brian, I don't know what he's going to do for the fourth one. So uh, he happens to be in Claremont tonight, so he's there preaching, so that's why he's not here. So that means if you have any questions, Brian gets the answer. So, you know, that'll teach you when you leave, you got to pay the price. So uh, that being said, uh, remember we talked about the broad items. Recasting rejections, things like that. The love, offer, serve, teach. We talked about sort of creating opportunities with accessibility and spiritual small talk. So that gets us sort of in the door, if you will. And now when you're starting to teach, these are some of the things that you will come. Presumably, uh, you, you, will, you will come, uh, you, you will encounter them. You will come in contact with people will ask you these questions. Uh, but before we get going, let's, uh, let's go ahead and bow in prayer, please. Our gracious God, how wonderful it is that we can gather together as your purchased people, those that have been redeemed, that we've been washed in the waters of baptism, that we would rise and be new, a new creature, and help us to understand our Heavenly Father that that's what we strive to be each and every day, a new creature, a perfect creature. Though we will fail, our Heavenly Father, help us to always be mindful that we're trying to be who you are. And help us to always be mindful that that's who we want to be, followers of you. Our Heavenly Father, as we go through this, let us be very mindful of the necessity of baptism as your scriptures um, reveal to us. And those that may not know it, just help us to uh, work with them, uh, to explain it to the very best of our ability. And our Heavenly Father... Don't let us think that we have failed if they don't believe that because we see time and time again in, in the scriptures where your son and our savior would talk to people and they would, not, uh, they would not listen as well. Our heavenly father, take care of us as we go through this evening. Bless us, guide us, and forgive us. For it's in Christ's name, amen. All right. So you would think <coughs> baptism would be the thing that would unite Christianity. Virtually every Religious organization has the concept of baptism. But you're going to find, if you look at this piece of paper right here, that's not the case. Okay? So, with that being said, let's just ask us a question. Since this is not the case, when... I have a question that I, that I sent out. What are some differences between the biblical instructions on baptism and what other religious organizations or, or other people may believe about it? Now, I'm going to ask you just to let those creative juices just sort of stir a little bit. If you wrote something down, that's great. Just keep it in your mind. We will get to that a little bit later. But I want that to sit in your head. What script... Oh, we got some extra paper here. Extra, if you did not get a handout, um, Ryan's got them for you. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, and as a matter of fact, I'm equal opportunity. Tonight I have a right-handers uh, stapling. So, last time was 
was to the left. It opened this way. So I guess I just made that up because I did it wrong. So anyway, with that being said, let's, let's move forward. So just think about the question. I, I asked this, you know, these are, this is the question for uh, tonight. So just think about that because we're going to move rather quickly. So I know you can't see that, but you can see this. There's 10 religious organizations here and a whole host of items that are related to baptism down the left-hand column. Does that look like United? Does this look like United? No, it doesn't look like United. And when I watched a video where this came from, guess what? That's what you might, you might say, oh, Joe, you always look like that. But I really look like because of, uh, because of this. Look at this. This is how a variety of uh, religious organizations see baptism. Some people say, oh, you have to have a witness. And some people say, oh, you're going to be baptized going forward as opposed to backwards. There's a, a host of things here, a host of things. But I don't really want to focus on that in and of itself. Keep these. This, this may be sort of handy as you would talk to a, a certain people. So uh, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that uh, it, it could be confusing. And I know the letters are a little small. I had to try to cram it in there, but it may be a reference material for you. With that being said, as opposed to be confused, let's have a look at salvation. And I want to make sure when we talk about salvation, that we talk about it from the perspective of the right way as opposed to, or a scriptural way, as opposed to people that may not believe in scriptural um, baptism. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be honest with you. This is something you need to know. This is something you need to have in your head. When you go to talk to people, these are the things that you need to be aware of. Hear, believe, faith, confess, repent, baptism. And I have salvation at the very bottom. Just remember that. Salvation at the very bottom. 1 Peter, Peter 3.21. We'll get to that in a minute. Notice where baptism shows up. At the end. Now, we would call that the scheme or steps of of salvation or steps to become, uh, to, to become a Christian. Uh, I, I will say, for example, Acts 2.38 says, repent and be baptized. It doesn't mention believe. It doesn't mention hear the word. Why? Those people didn't need that. They already believed. Why? I just killed Jesus. So they were going to repent from their sins and be forgiven. So what I'm saying is it doesn't always include every one of those explicitly. Now, those are the things you need to really have in your mind when you talk to people. So, if you need uh, that information later, I can get it to you. But we're going to move uh, a bit quicker tonight than we usually do. So I'm trying to give you a chance because I know some people are note takers. So, moving forward. Let's look at a few items to help center ourselves on why we get baptized and, 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 and the order. Mark 16, 16, the one who has believed and has been baptized will be saved. But the one who has not believed will be condemned. What is the order? Believed, baptized, saved. Can we see that? Okay, I'm, I'm trying to do it left to right for you guys. So I have to think. It's hard, you know, you go left to right, you know. So believed, baptized, saved. Now, some people will say, but you really don't need to be baptized because it says, but the one who has not believed will, uh, will be condemned. Well, that, that is a true statement. There it is. So we have a problem already, or do we? Well, I mean, you got to think about it. If you don't believe, are you going to get baptized? No, you're not. Why would you bother? And if you didn't believe and you were baptized, bring your rubber ducky because it's just a bath. So in other words, it doesn't mean that, this, that we, we don't need to be baptized here. So all I'm saying is we see the order. Next, this is what I was talking about. 1 Peter 3.21. Corresponding to that, baptism. 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 What's the word? No, 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 no. Baptism. Now. Baptism. Now. Not before baptism. Baptism now saves you. Notice, God was ready. He knew 
not the removal of dirt from the flesh. And oh, I know what I'll do. I'll get my scrub brush and my rubber ducky and into the bath I go and I'm baptized. No, that's not what we're talking about. So we see here, when does salvation occur? Bapti baptism now saves you. We know the order. We know when it occurs. And now let's just talk about Greek. So I don't know if you can see that little to the upper left hand side. So that's, that's in the Greek language and it's pronounced baptizo, right? So it's transliter transliterated, baptized, right? But it's translated uh, by the Blue Letter Bible, dipping, submerging, uh, uh, immersion, generally to wash, to cleanse, right? An illustration, there's a difference. Repent and be baptized, that's what, transliterated. Repent and be submerged. Be immersed. That is a true translation. There's a whole reason why that occurred. But any, anyway, the reason that we see baptized is because it's transli transliterated from baptizo. You can see baptism in baptizo, the Greek. So what I'm saying is when you see baptize, it means immerse. It means to submerge, not to pour, and things of that nature. So we just need to be aware of what the Bible teaches. So, let's move forward. <clears throat> this is uh, this one right here. So, I'm trying to help you. You started with this, right? Now, we're going to move on to this. So hopefully this, I'm, I'm starting to scale it down. <laughs> so it makes it a little easier. Okay, so we have action one, two, and three, and we have scenario one, two, and three. Now there's a lot more actions and there's a lot more scenarios, but I'm just trying to keep it simple within the context here. So you either, scenario one says, I'm gonna be baptized and now I'm saved, and now I can believe. So a variety of religious organizations say, baptism's required and so therefore I am saved, but at a later time, I'm going to believe, and usually that will occur where there's a confirmation style classes, uh, like when, when, when babies are, are, are sprinkled or poured, they are then saved, but at a later time, they go through a confirmation process. I, I, I'm not familiar with that, but that's just what I understand. Number two, you're, you believe, you're saved, now you are baptized. So what the idea is, I, I, I believe, and that, that saves me in and of itself, and now I will be baptized as an outward symbol of sort of an inward cleansing. So in other words, I've already, I've, I've, I believe that I'm saved, and now I will be baptized. Number three, believe, right? Baptized, saved. I think that's what sort of harmonizes with the scriptures that we see. We're going to spend time on mainly number two. Uh, number one, I, I think if you look at an, an infant, an infant who, is, who is baptized, they don't believe it's in a method that is, is, is not in the scriptures. I don't see that. Um, uh, another thing is they'll say the household was baptized. Well, we don't know that there was a baby there. There's no specific instance that I'm aware of that a baby was baptized. I don't know of that. So we're going to sort of step into number two there. So we're going to move into the, the sort of the third part. We talked about sort of the chaos of baptism, what it is. And then number three, we're going to talk about four different objections. Okay. And it's going to basically be centered around scenario two, because I think that's what you're going to run into more than, more than not. That being said, objections to baptism being necessary for salvation. Do not think that these words are, oh, that's how you, so I'm going to talk to Johnny and it's, he's going to have the serving objection. No, that's just what I came up with just to make it sort of easier to understand. Serving objection, works objection, order objection, method objection. So let's do the first one. Got to catch up with my notes here. Let's do the first one. So this is the concept of where, well, you know, Joe, you're telling me I need to be baptized, really? I, I've been, I've, you know, I've been helping the elderly. I've been reading my Bible. I've been, I've been doing a, a variety of things, and, and and now I have to be baptized. I, you're telling me I'm going to hell for that? 
you also maybe hear people that will then realize, uh oh, we got a problem here. What about great grandpa, Fred? He wasn't baptized either. What does that mean? Joe, what are you telling us? What are you telling me? So this is the people who, who serve. I'm not saying they don't do good godly works. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying they see that as the whole of salvation. So let's consider a couple of, a couple of items here. <clears throat> I think this, number one, is, is we need to keep this in mind at all times. We are not the judge. We are not the judge. God is the judge. He's the one that gave us the Bible. He is the one that's going to be the judge. Okay? There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you? Judging your neighbor. Doesn't mean we're not supposed to use the Bible to uh, look at people, but we're going to use the Bible. We're not going to use our opinions or anything like that. But the thing that you got to really think about on this one if I gave you more information about God's Word, and you said, mm, Joe, I really, I, don't confuse me with the Bible. How does that sound? If I were to tell you about other things, wouldn't you go, mm, I need to study that. And another thing is, <clears throat> we have two examples of, of, of people who learn more in the Bible, or learned biblical characters that learn more. And so what did they do with it? So we go to Cornelius, Acts 10. Surely no one, um, let's see here. I want to make sure. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Acts 10, sorry. Uh, surely no one can refuse water, right, for these to be baptized who have received, they already received the Holy Spirit just as we did, uh, Kenny. So in other words, there's, there's new revelation. Surely, I mean, they had the Holy Spirit, Baptism, which is a, is a little out of order for what we're used to. That's what happened. But they're saying, hey, these people need to be baptized. So what happened? And he ordered them to be baptized. I do believe, uh, help me out if uh, you Bible scholars, I think that's Peter saying that. So what I'm saying is, what did they do with it? They, you know, they were, there was more information given and they acted on it. Let's look at... Apollos. This is Apollos. This man had been instructed, instructed, he knew, right, in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he was accurately speaking and teaching the things about Jesus, being acquainted only with the baptism of John, John the Baptist. And he began speaking boldly in the synagogue. And when uh, Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained him the way of God. Notice what happens more accurately. And what was that? What was that? Is the baptism uh, of Jesus, if you will, as opposed to, to, to John. So what happens? They gave him more information. So I think it's important that we think, if you're given more information, what should you do with it? Shouldn't you act on it? That's what you should do. I mean, if, you, if you're at work or, on t or you see something on TV or Internet and you get information, oh, don't go buy that car. Oh, I'm just going to go around to the parking lot or, or to the uh, used car lot and get it. No, you don't do that. You say, I, I've got more information. I'm going to make a, a certain I'm going to make a certain decision. So as we can see, this is not an excuse to say we're not going to be baptized. I think the second thing is say by faith. So this is a sort of a faith only. If you are baptized, that's a works-based kind of thing. We don't need any baptism because, you know, we can't earn our way to sal uh, 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 salvation into heaven. And that is true. That is true. You can't earn it. You can't do enough good works. Not possible. Not possible. However, there's some scriptures we need to consider when, when we think, oh, but you need baptism. Well, let's look at a few. Romans 3, 28, For we maintain that a person is justified by faith. Notice what it says, apart from the works of the law. Right? Galatians 2, 16, Nevertheless, knowing that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus or, uh, Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Jesus, or well, I keep turning it around, Christ Jesus, so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not the works of the law. Since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. And Ephesians, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Now i got a question for you. 
Are these verses correct? They're correct. Why? They're in the Bible. So if you don't believe these, how can you believe any of them? But we got a problem. If you believe those, where does baptism fit in? Ooh, we got a problem here, don't we? Well, we don't really have a problem because we've only looked at three verses. How many verses are in the Bible? A few more than three, I'll tell you that. So let's have a look at something. We need to consider the whole counsel of God. And I think another thing Brian has brought sort of to my attention, and I hope this means something to you, just because something is in the Bible does not mean this is a response to how, do I, how can I be saved? How can I be saved? It was written maybe to a different audience, and this was maybe written to a different audience. Let's look. So let's just look at this as far as the whole counsel of God. Let's talk about just faith. So by faith, right? Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to the Bible. Let's read this by faith. By faith Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Is there a problem there? Any time you take a, a pencil and you, and you mark out part of the Word of God, you're going to have a problem. But you could say, aha, I'll prove them wrong. Ha <laughs> ah, look here. See, Noah prepared an ark for the salvation of his household by which he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness. Well, it doesn't say that either. So, I think it says this. Faith and an activity. Notice, when he bought it, uh, when he, when he, well, he could have bought an ark, but I think he built it, sorry, <clears throat> a bit expensive. When he built the ark, what was it for? A flood, right? Isn't it interesting that there's water here? Are we picking up on a thing? Yeah, I think you're picking up on a thing. Just trying to touch some uh, areas. So I think another thing that we, we, as we move forward here, when we look at Hebrews 11.7, it's faith and the ark. It's faith in doing something else. Think about this. If he didn't have faith, if Noah didn't have faith, would he have ever built the ark? Huh. I wonder if it's going to rain in 120 years. I don't think it's ever rained so far. I think I'm going to, I'll go out and buy that new ark. No, he wouldn't have done that. What would have happened? He would have been killed like the rest of the people. I have faith. I know God's going to have it do something, rain or whatever. He talks about rain, but I don't, I just don't. I think I'd rather just sit in my cave and play my video games. I am not going to go out and, and, and get an ark. I, I just not, I'm not going to build it. What would have happened when it flooded? He would have been wiped out too. He had been killed. It's both. Now, another thing, Paul's writing to the Jews here. We've got to keep in mind, Jews are real law keepers. They had 613 distinct laws. They were all about the law. They are going to keep the law. They even had more and more laws. They just wrote all kinds of stuff. What we're trying to get at here is Jesus, or, or, or excuse me, Paul is writing, look guys, you don't need more laws. You can't even keep those. Why? Because you keep sacrificing. You're killing animals left and right. So what you need is the ultimate sacrifice. And who is the ultimate sacrifice? Jesus. Have faith in Him and His sacrifice. And do what He says. Well, what does Jesus say to do? Repent and be baptized. So what we're talking about here is... The whole counsel of God, and remember what was being written, was not written to the question of what must I do to be saved. It was written to an audience that was very stuck on laws, and he's pointing them to faith as opposed to just raw works. The next one is going to be a little more complicated, so I will try to be patient with you if you'll be patient with me. The third one is what's, what I call the order of the order objection. Don't get hung up on that. It just means that words are sort of switched depending on what you put in there. 
this argument about, I've already been forgiven, I don't really need baptism. <clears throat> There's a word for in a variety of, of different scriptures for F-O-R. In the, Greek, uh, the, in the Quinine Greek, the, the common Greek at the time is ace. If I pronounce that wrong, sorry for all you Greek scholars out there. So when you're reading it, in the, uh, like if you go to the Greek interlinear, you will see ace in place of F-O-R. And this word can mean one of two things, in order to bring about or because of. Okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to go through a little exercise. Let's see which one works. So you see we're four and it's ace. We're going to put in one and say, Peter said to them, repent and each, uh, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in order to bring about, in order to obtain, in order to get the forgiveness, salvation of your sins. And you will, be, and, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We say, yeah, I, I, think I, I think I can get behind that. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first one. So that's the first scripture. Just, and, and the people that, that believe this, they'll go, if you believe you need to be baptized, they will go to this scripture and you'll see why they go. So let's go to the next one. Peter said to them, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because of the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here's the order thing. Because you have forgiveness of sins, because you've already been saved, you need now to repent and be baptized. That's how it reads if you think of because of. Remember the other way was repent, baptize, forgiveness, salvation. This is because of the forgiveness of your sins, because you've already been saved, this is their rationale. You will now need to repent and be baptized. That sounds really weird. I know that sounds really weird to our ears. But I'm just saying, they, if, peop, if you're studying with people, this is one of the things that believe this will, will say. And this is where they go. They will go to Matthew 3.11. As for me, I baptize you with water for ace repentance. Okay, let's go check this one out. So we're going to do the same thing. Same thing. We're going to put something in. As for me, I baptize you with water in order to bring about repentance. Okay, I'm going to baptize you and after that you can repent. Okay, I'm going to baptize you and after that repent of the sins that we just washed away. That doesn't make any sense to us, does it? Let's try this one. As for me, I baptize you with water because of repentance. So what they're saying here is, because you have repented, I will now baptize you with water. Does that make sense? We're going like, yeah, I can get behind that. They will say, aha, you admit because of is okay here. If you go back to Acts 2.38, you have to use because of there. You go, well, okay, well, let's try this one on. This is our third scripture. For this is my blood of the covenant. This is Matthew 26, 28. Same concept, four and the ace. For this is the blood of my covenant, which is being poured out for, for forgiveness of sins. Okay, now let's try it again. Let's go through the same exercise. <clears throat> for this is my blood of the covenant. Who's the my? Jesus. We know that, Okay which is being poured out, I'm being crucified for the many, the people, because of the forgiveness of sins. Remember, order. Anytime you have because of, if you use that, you're going to switch the order. Because you have the forgiveness of your sins, because you have already been saved, right? God is going to send Jesus down to die on a cross and pour out His blood for the forgiveness of your sins you already have. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you worship a God that would send His Son to die on a cross for, to forgive people even though they have already been forgiven? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Matter of fact, that's pretty blasphemous if you, if you really get down to it. Let's try this one. I think you'll get behind this one. 
For this is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out for many in order to bring about forgiveness. God is going to send Jesus. He's going to die on the cross in order to bring about, in order to get what? Forgiveness, salvation. See how that makes sense? So what I'm saying is, you're probably picking up on this. We'll have one, or, one more example just to make sure. It depends <clears throat> not on always in order to bring about or because of it depends on the context of the Scripture. You can't use one all the way through. Because that, 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 you, you'll have God sending Jesus down to die for people that have already been saved. That makes no sense. That, that's a cruel, cruel God. And He is nothing but a pure and loving God. One more. <clears throat> Luke 27, 47. This is a little more, a little weird, but I'm just trying to get these out here in front of you. So if someone talks to you about this, will you remember them all? Probably not. But you'll have the idea in your head. And that repentance for ace in, in the Greek, forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. Let's try it. And that repentance because of forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. Because you have been forgiven, you're saved. You will now need to, to repent, and I'm going to repent. And I'm going to proclaim that in His name to all the nations, starting in Jerusalem. Because you're saved, you need to repent. What are you going to repent from? You've just been saved. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I see questions. I'll, I'll get you questions. I'm, I'm motoring. I'm motoring. I'm in fifth gear, tenth gear, some gear. Probably in neutral, just flying down the hill. <clears throat> Let's try this one. And that repentance, in order to bring about forgiveness of sins, would be proclaimed in His name. We get that. Repent. In order to get what? In order to obtain what? Forgiveness of sins. So, when we think about that and we go back to Acts, which one makes sense? Which one makes sense in order to bring about? Repent. Be baptized in order to bring about forgiveness, salvation. See, that's sort of a little more complicated. I don't know that anybody's going to say, oh, I've got all these down and I can't wait till I meet somebody like this. I doubt it. Most people, you probably say, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch Joe's thing and I'm going to have them watch Joe's thing. Or, or I know what, I'll have them talk to Joe. <laughs> yeah, you can do that if you want. Uh, but what I'm saying is just be aware. What we're trying to do is equip you so when you go talk to people and you hear things, it doesn't mean you'll know everything, but you'll be aware and can respond. So let's do the fourth one as we finish up. This is, they require baptism, but it's not with water, it's with the Holy Spirit. So Acts 1.5 and Matthew 3.11. Now 3.11 may sound familiar. Watch this. For John baptized with water... Uh, but when we get to it, but ye will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. It says Holy Spirit. Does it say water there? No, it doesn't. As for me, I baptize you with water for ace, ace, repentance. So because the way we use it, you're going to be you're going to repent and then be baptized. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I'm not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So we see Holy Spirit, don't we? It's there. So how do we deal with that? Well, we could use the whole, uh, what would you say? The whole counsel of God. We could do that. But what we, need to, what we need to really think about is, okay, what this is really talking about is once Jesus ascends in Acts 1, 7, 8, 9, somewhere in that neighborhood, we can't baptize people with water. That's what that basically is saying. Now, does that make sense? No, it doesn't. You can still baptize. You know how I know? Well, let's just let you see. The Ethiopian eunuch. Notice this is Acts 8, which is, according to my fancy math, Acts 1, Acts 8, seven verses, or, or excuse me, seven chapters passed when Jesus ascends. And guess what? Look, water, I put it in a pretty water color, the blue, you know, for all you people like that. 
What prevents me from being baptized? Cornelius, we just talked about that. Surely no one can refuse the water. And notice here, to be baptized, who has already received the Holy Spirit? So if you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, in, in this case, which is a peculiar case, they still needed water. What about Ananias? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins. That sounds like water to me. Paul and the Red Sea, 1 Corinthians. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our fathers who were under the cloud, and they passed through the sea. What was that sea? Remember, it was the Red Sea, right? Once again, we keep going back. Flood, the Red Sea, baptism. I think we're picking up on a program here. And that they were all baptized in, uh, into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, water. Peter, ooh, this is a little smaller, sorry. But this is a good book in. Remember we talked about 1 Peter 3.21. Corresponding to that, baptism. Baptism. Once again, baptism. All right, excellent. Thank you. Now let's back up a verse and we'll understand why I said that. Who were disobedient uh, when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah? We already talked about this. During the construction of the ark. Why did he do that? Because he had faith. But he didn't just have faith, he did what he was asked to do, and which a few, that is eight, no one, his sons and their wives, were brought to safely through the water. Now, corresponding to that, like Noah was saved by the water, by his faith and what he did, notice what it says. Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. Not taking a bath, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what's our conclusion? You need water baptism. So you have three minutes. I've tried to move through that quickly. I know you're, you're, I see people's eyes doing like this and stuff like that. Just, you know, close your eyes and just settle. So what did you guys come up with? So questions. I, I saw a question back. Randy, did you have a question a while back? If, if, um, so anything that you guys saw with your studies of the scriptures and anything you may have heard of uh, with other uh, beliefs. Yes, sir. Well, when I first put my hand up, it was that scripture you showed, Luke 27. I think it was 24, chapter 24, not 27. That's all I was going to say. But something I thought of earlier when you were talking about baptism and, and such, I remember when I was in Switzerland, some, I can't remember, it's like some religious historical society or something had a tour of a cathedral where they had done some excavating underneath. And it was really interesting because there was a large bap baptistry that you could immerse people in, had been filled in later, made smaller uh -huh. as the thing evolved, you might oh, say. Oh, I see. Okay. It was so, really fascinating to see that. Okay. So <laughs> in, in times way past, evidently, it was Immersion was the, the method of baptism, yes. but things evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, any questions? We're down to a minute and a half. Come on now. Somebody's got a question. Somebody's got a question. Somebody's got a question. Somebody's got a question. I think Jared's got a question. He's saving me. It's more of a comment. Um, okay. The it's issue I think that a lot of people have is with the distinction of what constitutes um, earning versus Submitting. conditions. So yeah. um, can, I don't think anybody would argue that belief is a condition. Most of them won't. There are people who are universalists that think everybody will be saved, but yes. most of the people we're talking about will believe that, con that uh, belief is a condition. But because it's a physical act, they consider baptism a work that you that you're claiming earns salvation, but in actuality, it's another condition. It doesn't earn you salvation, but it's still required. An example I like to think about is if a, a father offers their child who's 16, I'll buy you a brand new car <clears throat> if you'll make straight A's on your report cards all year. Okay, could the kid take the report cards down to the car dealership and say, here you go. I got all A's on my report cards, and my dad said, 
I get a car. No, that's not the price that was required for the car. No, it wasn't. That was a condition. The father is going to buy the kid a car. That's right. It's a free gift, but you, have to it, act you had to meet a condition in order to get that gift. That's right. We have one more question. That, that's a very good point. And that's sort of like, that's sort of like the, the flood. So he had faith, and what did he do? The condition was... He acted. Build the ark. You can ring the bell. Go ahead. One more. I, I believe that in John chapter 8, I think it is, where Jesus was asked, what should we do that we, we, that we should work the works of God? And he said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him work. whom he sent. So belief is a work. That's right. I was thinking about that when he said that. So baptize is a verb. For all you English people out there, I have a degree in math, so I can only handle like M-A-T-H, you know, any fancy stuff. So, but for you English people out there, what is, what is baptize? It is a verb. It's a, it's a, it's a, when you're a kid, it's a action word, right? That's what I was always taught. Now, what about belief? That's a, oh, well, belief is, is a, is a noun, but believe is a, is an action. So it's something that you do with your mind. So it's sort of like you guys were both talking about. Okay, I went over. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, Brian will be back uh, Monday, so get your thinking caps on uh, for instrumental music. Or I don't know what I said. That's a Sunday. I don't know what I said. Sunday, thank you very much.